All right. Okay, so, well, I'm Daniel Klimek from Embo Journal, and I'm in conversation today with uh, Corinna Moore. Mm -hmm. It's my pleasure. Thank you for, for joining. Thanks for inviting me. And we're at the uh, Cold Spring Harbor Symposium, the annual symposium, uh, Senescence and Aging. And mm -hmm. um, Corinna, you gave a really inspiring uh, talk, I think yesterday it mm -hmm. was. Yeah. And so I'm really happy to, to catch up on this and learn more about your views. So I would just say, I guess, if I'm correct, you started last year as a, as a new staff a faculty uh, um. at, at uh, Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. Mm -hmm. And um, I will just... Um, you know, for, for context and for, I will just say, okay, the, the, your talk was entitled Deconstructing Aging with Senolytic CAR T-cells. Mm -hmm. So, and you'll get, that, get at that in a, in a minute, I guess. But I wanted mm -hmm. to start with a quote. I, I was really inspired <laughs> by that. It said, so you said, senescence is a physiological process, actually. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe, maybe uh, refer, uh, you like, uh, um. tell me more about uh, your perspective there? Yeah, I think we focus a lot on the bad aspect of senescence, of how it really um, contributes to aging down the road if the cells are not clear. Um, but I think it's important to remember that it's, um, it's a stress response program that is helpful for the organism, right? It's a tumor suppressor mechanism. It has positive roles in regeneration or wound healing. And I think that um, a lot of times we, we kind of um, forget that side of senescence. So it has these two um, sides, right? Like the, the good yeah. and the bad cop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but here yeah. uh, in the in the elderly, I guess we're, we're more, mm -hmm. well, it can help prevent cancer, I guess. Mm -hmm. But then at some point it gets detrimental, correct? Yeah, I think with senescence, the key is really um, is it the time course. Like um, when you induce senescence acutely and the cells are immediately cleared by the immune system, mm -hmm. um, this is very beneficial. Um, but if these cells do not get eliminated and they, you know, they keep accumulating the tissue and they keep generating inflammation, that's when they become a problem. But but usually the body would be able to clear them out uh, with the with the endogenous immune system, right? Right. But with aging, um, you have on one hand. Uh, higher number of senescent cells being induced because you accumulate more damage. Mm -hmm. um, and on the other, your own immune system doesn't work as well anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so they end up, you know, not being able to really clear the cells So they as stick around and, and, tr and make trouble, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. well, I, I, I guess most of the, you know, many will know now, by now, you know, during recent years, there's a lot of excitement about Mm -hmm. drugs that can target these cells possibly and remove them, mm -hmm. different uh, pathologies. And um, yeah, I guess you, but you were still not satisfied. I mean, there are still limitations of these different mm -hmm. ways of, maybe you can explain more about this. Yeah, I mean, there are some approaches mostly um, based on a small molecule compounds um, to eliminate senescent cells. And, you know, the efficacy varies. A lot of this um, drugs are really uh, repurposed from cancer studies and then they were kind of found in in vitro screenings to have some senolytic activity mm -hmm. um, but for a lot of them we actually don't understand even um, the mechanism of action very well for example fisetin is used very often but this is a flavonoid it's a natural product mm -hmm. we don't really even know what the target is so um, I would think that be required? So do we actually care? Or? I think it's important to understand which cells we're, we're targeting in tissue. So we know if we give these drugs, uh, we see striking effects in the mice, but it's really difficult to know whether this is really due to targeting synapsin cells or not, mm -hmm. and what cells you're actually targeting. If you don't really know well the mechanism, I think it's, it's, so it's hard so to So we need a thorough understanding of what which cells, uh, which cell types yeah. are senescent in the tissue, and then yeah. what's the consequence of removing them? Yeah. In, I and think that's, if we that's where you started with your work? Or? Yeah, that's kind of what led mm -hmm. me to uh, try to find alternative approaches to target these cells. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then I guess, I think the field is, is as we also hear, learn here at the meeting, the mm -hmm. field is, uh, is not, the markers for senescent cells in the, mm -hmm. in the elderly are not so clear, right? Or yeah. But you, you went a step ahead and tried to find really specific markers. Yeah, I think that's a problem we have in the senescence field in general. Mm. You usually need multiple markers to call a cell senescent. And, you know, there, there's a lot of discussions going on in the field into which markers should we include and should not. Mm -hmm. um, and how did you tackle yeah. that? Or uh, we, uh, most of the markers that had been used for senescence really focus on, it, um, like, intracellular properties of these cells. Um, but one thing that I think is really important is actually the extracellular or like the, mostly the surface proteins. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's an interesting approach because if you know specific surface molecules that are really upregulated on the cells, you can 
um, do things like sort them the cells out from tissues by fax, for example, mm -hmm. and then you can actually do a studies with these cells, which you wouldn't be able to do if it was intracellular markers, or so at like least not so easily. Mm. So like uh, profile yeah. them or, or and be more specific overall, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the That's what you what did, right? Yeah, that's what we believe. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was struck yeah. by, because I, I, I'm a blood biologist, yeah. and so the, the, the marker mm -hmm. you mentioned eventually, mm -hmm. which did the trick was was UPAR, right? And yeah. this is a, this is a, mm. uh, a wound, uh, so like a, a coagulation yeah. cascade factor. It is. And it how come mm. this is so specific for senescent cells in the end? Was that an, wasn't that a surprise in a way? It, it wasn't, it wasn't. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, UPAR definitely has a role to the end stage coagulation cascade. It really helps degrade the fibrin clot. Um, but also, um, it makes a lot of sense that senescent cells put expresses because they express a lot of metalloproteinases and mm -hmm. really remodel the extracellular matrix around them. Mm -hmm. So it really fits into the biology of the cells. And uh, what we found is that uh, UPAR is really overexpressed by senescent cells mm -hmm. compared to other populations. Yeah, this is really yeah. fascinating to me. <laughs> so, and then you, but then you, you, it's all about also including translational aspects and really targeting right. these cells specifically. Mm -hmm. And there you, you took advantage of the CAR T cells, right? Yep. And how, yeah. how does that work? And, and <laughs> apparently you were yeah. su really successful doing so. So how, how did you approach this? Yeah, we wanted to, obviously CARs were initially developed uh, for cancer, um, mm. but we were very curious to see if we could use them to target a specific cellular program like senescence. Mm -hmm. So knowing that UPAR is really high on these cells, we just engineered CARs that would recognize UPAR as their target. Mm. In a, in, in, yeah. in throughout the body or in a specific tissue? For now, throughout the body, we mm -hmm. are definitely working on trying to make them more tissue specific. Mm -hmm. um, but the initial approach was just throughout the body. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've done a lot of um, studies and syngenetic studies in mice, and we see that indeed the cars are actually able to, to target the cells. So they are functional. Yeah. Right? They are functional. Yeah. And and how how does how does it work? Do you have a give a single? Uh, uh, injection or mm -hmm. is it a, p a lasting treatment or? Right, we give a single uh, low dose injection mm -hmm. in all of our work. We um, tend to use between half a million to one million mm -hmm. uh, cars, which is mu much lower than what you would use if you were doing cancer studies. You would be given like three million at least. Mm -hmm. So it's between one third and one sixth so of the dose. That's so that's sufficient. And do they persist in the yeah. body actually? They or? persist. So we've done studies in aging where we've um, treated the mice when they were young, like three months old, and then let them age. And once they become 18 months old, um, we see that the cars are actually still there and mm -hmm. a lot of them um, have memory properties. So they've uh. really developed persistence. And that, that's a good thing to have, I guess, right? I believe so. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's good. Uh -huh. um, yeah, because they eliminate senescent cells continuously throughout the life of, of the mouse. Yeah. Uh, so we know that when these mice become older, um, they've kind of aged better. They are performing uh, functionally much better than the control animals. So, so they are, they're even doing better, yeah. right? It's not yeah. just that you keep the, the stable yeah. state, but they, they even yeah. uh, uh, ameliorate, or it's kind of... Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And then, uh, I mean, the, the main, I guess the main features which are problematic then in is, in is the fibrosis, and so the right. tissue is really altered. and. And that can be um, prevented or stopped with the or reversed even with the with the um, cell cars. treatment. Yeah, yeah, we've definitely seen improvements in liver fibrosis. Mm -hmm. um, we check mostly short term in those studies, so it would be good to see what happens long term. Uh -huh. um, but yeah. And um, well, now it's we just discussed this. It's <laughs> an exciting phase because now you have your your new assistant professor here. You yeah. have your team, and mm -hmm. um, so what's the what's the next steps and what's <laughs> what's the challenges also for you, right? I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, what's the what's the the, the projects you w you work on to optimize this or to get it further? What's the next steps there? I mean, I think there's still a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, to be, able, I mean, ideally, we would like to see the cars uh, being taken into clinical trials. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, what's the hurdles there? So the, the toxicology, toxicology tests. Yeah, a lot of safety still would efficacy, have to be done. Yeah. Um, try to uh, decide what would be the best car design, what would mm -hmm. be the best target. We like UPAR a lot, but maybe is the UPAR conserved in, you in in men actually? Uh, yeah, it yeah, it's, it's also expressed in humans. Although the homology is not the sequence, uh, it's not as similar. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but we also see that in, in human tissues, um, senescent cells express high levels of UPAR. And is, a, is that, because um, I remember from your talk, you said something about there's, you might search, you might profile these cells more to find even a secondary marker. So right. is, it, is it advantageous to have a combinatorial marker combination at It at could last? make them even more specific. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be For subsets of, of senescent cells or? For example, yeah. Uh, and then the, uh, the the other angle, I guess, is uh, okay. This is cancer, and it's it's, right. it's really promising. Mm -hmm. So congratulations! <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> but um, of course, there are many pathologies and disease mm -hmm. contexts, and I guess you can and senescent cells, as we heard, yeah. they are they are about everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So you could also do are you also yeah. exploring this in other tissues? And yeah, I mean, there are multiple um, tissues that would be interesting uh, to potentially check, like the brain, mm -hmm. um, for example. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of work for your team, right? A lot of work. <laughs> Tough <laughs> yeah, decisions. We're busy. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. That was really enlightening, and I yeah, it's, it's really encouraging to see how how the field progresses and this your project in specifically. So congratulations. Thank you so much. And all the best for the next steps. Yeah. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>